You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello, and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Soleri, and today we're going to be talking about guilt. When we have those moments in our life where we just wish we hadn't said something and we wish we could take it back, but you can't, or times in our life where there's been an event that, you know, did not go so well and we contributed to that and we, we feel guilty and the emotion, we want to release that so that we can live full out. So we'll be taking your calls. Again, that number is 800-333-0001. Also in our next segment, we're going to be joined by our inspirational guest, Ethan Fisher. Now talk about guilt. He was drinking and driving and actually killed another driver. So he's going to be telling us about his journey and, and where he is today with getting those guilty emotions out of his mind and heart. And then also, if you want to hear today's show again, feel free to go to livingfullout.com to hear this episode and all the other ones. Or if you have Alexa at home, you can listen to our show there. Or go to your app store and just look for Living Full Out Radio Show. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we actually have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them and see how we can help. Hi, my name is Nancy. How can I help you? Hi, this is Lola. I had a quick question. Yes, hi. Okay, so um, I'm a senior um, in college, currently a senior in college. And um, currently I'm kind of worried about, like, finding a job. I just wanted to know, like, how I can deal with that stress, like, like balancing school and then finding a job for after senior graduation. I remember those days and I don't want to go back, right? It's hard. It's hard. You think of all the competition, all the people with the same major, right? But yeah. what I want you to yeah. do is rather than getting gobbled up by all the what it could have should us, what you could have done differently or all the fears of the future that hasn't even happened yet, you want to really identify what are your strengths? and put those right out there on your resume, in your cover letter. Shout to the rooftop during your interview about those strengths. So if I was looking to hire you, what do you think is just one of your great qualities? Um, I'm good at working in like teams, like groups. Okay, and that's an important quality, right? Because very few positions does someone work just by themselves, unless it's a work from home, but even at that, you have to talk to people. What would be another good quality? Yeah. Um, I'm very organized. Organized, right? Yeah. Okay. So after this show, I'm going to have you come over to my place. <laughs> it's a good quality organization. <laughs> uh huh. How about one more? I um, have great leadership skills. Okay. Now, look, we I'm could play this game all day, people. right? I bet you could come up with a list of five to 10 positive attributes about yourself. So here's what you do. You come up with your fab five or top three, however many you want to come up with that's easy. And then when you're applying for a job in your cover letter, you want to make sure that you spotlight those, those skills that you have and, and correlate them to the position you're applying for. Okay, really customize that cover letter. Or on your resume, make sure that when you're talking about all your work experience, that those positive skills that you have, that they're front and center, big and bold, okay? And, and then also, okay. as you're looking ahead at your future, I really want you to try to cast away the idea that it's a big sea of a lot of competition. And I want you to look at yourself rather as a big fish in a small pond. Because here's the thing, there's only one you. And that's that's... Uh -huh. That, that takes the competition away. No one's going to speak like you, think like you, organize like you, lead like you, right? So when yeah. you remember that there's only one you, some of that anxiety goes away. Okay? Yeah. But I think Thank if you, you do... So all, you're welcome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. And if you need some more support on that, you know, just reach out to us at Living Full Out because trust me, we've all been there. But I know you're going to do great. And, and just keep in mind those positive skills that you have. Okay? Great. Thank you. 
You got it. Thank you for calling in. I really appreciate that she asked that question, right? Because when we're trying to decide where we're going in our future, it can get a little bit hectic because we want to make sure that we, we are, we're putting out our best, but it creeps in our minds sometimes that, you know, do other people have more skills than us, uh, better talkers than us, better researchers, better leaders. And if you let all of that negativity creep into your mind, it will allow you to fester. But rather, you want to stand up and say, these are the qualities that I'm good at. And that's what it means to live full out. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we have another caller in the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, hello, Hi, Nancy. thank you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for calling in. How can I help you? Yes, I had a, a question. I um, I deal I deal with a lot of. I'm doing an internship right now. I'm also working full time, and I'm also doing uh, school. And I have a hard time tr- uh, balancing my responsibilities along with uh, taking care of my family, visiting my family, helping my family out. Mm-hmm. So I guess my question is, uh, how can I manage my time, take care of my responsibilities, and still have enough time for my loved ones? Mm, it's a really good question. And what what is your biggest fear? W- what do you think could happen uh, that's so my, my incredibly awful? My biggest fear would be mm-hmm. prioritizing the wrong things. Um, I, I, I feel bad having to say no to my family or saying I can't right now. Mm-hmm. But I do tend to prioritize my responsibilities as well. And I don't know if that's the right choice or I should focus more on my family. Well, and I'm so glad that you brought that up. So let's just look at the languaging, right? When you're saying no, when you say you can't, that no and those N apostrophe T words, right? It, it, it feels heavy. It feels like you're ashamed, like you're doing something wrong. And the thing right. is, is that people just want to know that you're thinking of them and that you're reserving some time in your day, in your month, in your year to see them. So don't feel ashamed or bad that you have to put work first or school or your internship because they, first of all, anybody who loves you and cares about you is going to want you to be successful and be happy in what you do. So they're going to cheer you on. But what you might do is say, you know what, I'm so sorry that I've had such a busy week or such a hectic month. But I am going to dedicate some time. In fact, what I'd like to do is two weeks from now, all Saturday is yours. Or if you have a certain uh, sporting event or something coming up that you either want to go to physically or just watch on TV, you can make a date with a friend on TV, right? You can watch the same show from two different locations. People just want your time. And if you do that, if you kind of make a date or make a plan, then that's going to satisfy that need or that disappointment that you feel. Also, I'm a firm believer in communication through text or email or phone calls. Just send somebody a text. I'm thinking of you today. Hey, I know you have a big presentation. You're going to do great. Do you see how you can just do those things that takes no time at all? Yes, yes, the the little things. (laughs) It's all about those little things. And also, I want you to go to livingfullout.com because on our homepage there, we do have a a PDF that you can download. It's 80 tips to bring balance into your life. And I promise you, any one of those 80 tips will help organize your schedule, prioritize your needs and desires. So definitely go to livingfullout.com to get that. It's all free. But I really appreciate you calling in. And if you just put the little things first, and just have trust that it's all going to work out, you're going to do great. Okay? Okay, thank Thank you you. very much. I'll definitely try to post it. Perfect. Thank you so much for calling in. And for everybody listening today, I I really appreciate that that last caller brought up the fact that he feels bad turning people down, saying no or I can't do something, because that's where the guilt comes in. That's where we feel heavy on our heart because we're, we're letting people down, we're disappointing them. And how can we live full out? How can we be successful in life if we're carrying around that burden? But here's the thing. We're assuming that the other person feels bad. We're, we're thinking that they are disappointed. But you don't necessarily know that. So I want you to, and I urge you, to have a conversation with someone. 
if you are thinking, if you're in that gray zone of thinking and assuming that someone is disappointed in you, I want you to pick up the phone and call them. Are you disappointed in me? And I guarantee you they're going to say no. And right there, you can release that burden out of your mind and move on to being who you want to be in the world. Now, we're going to stay with our conversation about guilt today and how to overcome those emotions. Stay with us because our inspirational guest, Ethan Fisher, is going to talk about the guilt that he had to release after killing somebody due to drinking and driving. Stay with us. We'll be coming right back after this break. I'm Nancy Solari, and this is The Living Full Out Show. This is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. But I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Tomorrow? <laughs> Let's check with Mom. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. Just make sure you have everything. Yep. Can we walk home? How about a taxi? 233 North Maple, please. It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Also, find fun activities to do like boating and biking or camping and hiking, plus much more. It's all right in your naturehood. Best day ever. A public service announcement brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Don't you wish that getting your child to eat right, move more, and spend less time in front of a screen could be as easy as pushing a button? It might not be that simple, but you do have more power than you know. And you can maximize that power with proven strategies, tips, and tools from the National Institutes of Health's We Can, or Ways to Enhance Children's Activity and Nutrition program. We Can offers all kinds of resources, including fun recipes and activities the family can do together to show you the way to live a healthier lifestyle. We're not saying it's easy. We are saying that it can be done. Take the first step today. Call 1-866-359-3226 for a free We Can Parents Handbook. And be sure to visit the We Can website at wecan.nhlbi.nih.gov for free information, too. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad and I shot off a rocket in the park. Today, my new son and I failed to shoot off a rocket. He knew exactly what to do. I had no clue what I was doing. We set up the rocket. We set up the rocket. Hit ignition. Hit ignition. And then? And then nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I laugh when I'm frustrated. Then out of nowhere, the rocket launched into the air. The rocket did get into the air. I've never seen anything fly so high. And then crashed into a kite. Look out! Look out! And then the pond. I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day, even if I tried. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over. Until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. 
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about guilt and such a heavy emotion that that can feel on us. And how do we set ourselves free from feeling that heaviness and being able to live full out in life? Well, our inspirational guest today, Ethan Fisher, has gone through that. He was basically driving one day, and he had been drinking. And we all do that, right? We've all done it. We raise our hands, everybody in the audience. But what happens when you've drank in too much, and then you black out, and all of a sudden you wake up in a hospital, and you realize you've killed someone. And I share that with you because Ethan is so courageous to come on today and share his story with us because the guilt that he has felt is still with him today. And so I'd very much like to welcome Ethan to the show. Hello, Ethan. Hello, Nancy. Hi there. You know, I just wanted to take a minute and share with our audience just quickly what had happened because what you did, well, by no stretch is it a good thing. So many people have done it and will continue to do it. And it just takes one time for somebody to kill someone and like you did. And so, again, I, I really appreciate you stepping up and being a voice uh, for the gentleman that has passed away. And so I'd like you to take our audience back a bit in time because this night did not come out of nowhere. You were introduced to drugs and alcohol at a pretty early age. And you also had a lot of lonely thoughts and didn't really have a focus or a compass. And that all can layer on each other to build us to moments like you would, like you had. Can you tell us how, being who you were in eighth grade, how that kind of built up to that accident? Yeah. Um, you know, going through middle school and high school is such a a learning experience for everybody, no matter who they are and where they come from. And, you know, my eighth grade is really the first time that I started to deal with, you know, those self-doubting thoughts of, am I good enough or am I popular enough? Do I have enough friends? And when you allow those, those negative thoughts to start to snowball, you begin to make um, choices and decisions that aren't typically what you do. And, and so my depression started to lead me to, you know, smoking weed to, to act out and think that I was being popular when I really wasn't. I was just starting to ruin my life at that point and didn't realize how much tragedy it was going to cause years down the road. Now, with alcohol specifically, did you enjoy the taste? Could you feel that you were drinking more than your peers? Or was it just that you were young and, and you, you had no balance with the alcohol? Yeah, the, the alcohol was uh, introduced to me in my junior year in high school, and and I didn't drink it for the taste. I drank it to socialize at first. And mm-hmm. after the socialization and, and doing it on the weekends, it started to become a habit. So I didn't like the taste. I never really liked the taste of alcohol. I didn't even like the taste of beer. But I knew what the end effect was going to be, and it was going to hide all my inhibitions. And it allowed me to, you know, act out because I'm a real quiet, shy individual. And alcohol allowed me to, you know, talk to random people and, and be outgoing. But it it went from a happy, you know, getting to know people to a devastating, dark, depressive, mood-altering substance that took me into dark places that, um, you know, were just, uh, you can't imagine how bad they were. They were, they were just bad. Mm-hmm. Well, I know the day, the night, I should say, of the accident, you actually had a pretty responsible plan. Uh, you were going to go to a friend's house. They had a place for you to sleep. And, yes, you were going to drink, but it was going to be in a safe zone. What happened to that safe zone? Why did the plan change? Um, I have no idea. Um, I kind of have a feeling that I got, you know, into like a verbal altercation with some of my friends because of, 
how drunk I was and I left. But that's the thing that scares me so much about alcohol is you can prepare and be as safe as possible and have a designated driver or have a bed made out and intentionally plan to stay at that house and never want to leave. But the thing with alcohol, you, you act on impulse and reaction and emotion. And I think something happened that night to where I was emotionally charged up and, and left. Um, I had no intention of leaving. My friends had no intention of leaving. We all planned to stay there that night. And that was our set evening agenda. And mm -hmm. for something that I don't know, because I was in a blackout, something changed. And I, I left. And my friends didn't know where I went. They actually had a bed made out for me because they knew I was going to stay there that night. Mm -hmm. And and it, it's hard to piece together exactly what happened. Um, I know friends of yours had said that you were jumping into a hot tub. And police reports would say that maybe you crawled out a window to get out of that house so no one could see you. It's hard to say exactly what happened. But what you do know is the very first memory was you in the hospital. And who told you what happened? Yeah. Um, so I ended up having two nurses come in, and and one of them told me she didn't know what was happening, but it wasn't a good thing. And the second one is the actual nurse that told me that I ended up drunk driving and killing somebody. And... I don't know how long, I don't know the the time frame of what happened, but I just remember putting my my head in my hands and bawling my eyes out for probably what seemed like hours. Um, you know, to to try to grasp that concept of what happened, it, it just it felt like a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And you know, further into the hours, it started to become a reality. And that took on a whole nother, you know, emotional course um, mm -hmm. when it started to hit me of what actually transpired that night. Yeah, and, and when we come back from a break, and we will be going to break shortly, it, you know, trying to break apart what did happen that night and, and how fast were you driving and what did the accident look like? And I know you've gone over this in your mind over and over again. And you've even chosen to dedicate your life to, to spreading the word and trying to stop as many people from drinking and driving. And so what I want to do, Ethan, is that we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to go more into that night and what happened and, you know, how you've dedicated your life to, to Bill and, and, you know, leaving a legacy in his memory as well as yours. So stay with us. And for everybody listening today, we are talking about guilt, and we've all been there. We've all had those moments where we have that tightness in our throat or heaviness on our heart. But I want to take today as the day that we release it. So stay with us. I am Nancy Soleri, the the Living Full Out Show, and let's release these guilty feelings together or at least get the support that we need. We'll be back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. There are many sounds in your day-to-day -day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless emergency alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. 
Hello, my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really live. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Soleri, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want. And we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming But we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're focusing on feeling guilty for something we've done, we've said, we've all been there. And how do we let that go? How do we tell people we're sorry? How do we make amends? How do we do inspirational things to make up for those that we've hurt? There's so many ways in which we can release the feeling of guilt. Where do you begin? Our inspirational guest today, Ethan Fisher, is no stranger to walking that road because he went driving one evening after drinking and he accidentally killed somebody. And that's a guilty emotion that he lives with today. And we're continuing our interview with Ethan, so I'd like to welcome him back to the show. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Nancy. Hi there. Hey, so I know that obviously during the time that you were driving before the actual impact had occurred, you are in kind of a blackout mode, but you had gone back in in recent years and you've listened to the, you know, the police recordings and, and so forth. What did you learn about your driving that the activity, like where were you and how fast were you going? What was kind of the environment? So what happened, um, and this is all from the police reports and, um, from the ambulance, um, 
reports that I ended up driving down the wrong side of a four lane road with no tire on one side and a flat tire on the other. Um, and I ran through multiple, um, stop signs and stop lights and ended up hitting Bill and his vehicle at 72 miles an hour. Um, and from what the reports say, I, I hit his vehicle and didn't even know that I was in a wreck until I drove like 150 feet from the accident. Um, until the cops came and pulled me out. Um, and at that point they knew that I had no idea who I was or what I was doing. Um, I was so, so incredibly messed up that I had no idea that I had even been driving. Wow. I mean, so amazing and tragic at the same time because obviously none of that you were aware of. And I, I know you had mentioned in our last segment that when you came back, when you when you were in the hospital and, and somebody finally told you what had happened, you're broken about it and scared and guilty and probably this huge array of emotions. But I also know that you had a decision to make and you were really contemplating running, getting out of there. But what did you ultimately process over that time and decide to do? Um, I, I remember distinctly having these three, you know, thoughts, and one was to take my own life. Um, I'd been suicidal before, and that was my first instinct, um, just to end it all, because I didn't want to deal with what happened. And then I thought about fleeing. Um, and then for me, the, the third and final, you know, option or, or thought or choice that actually came across was, you know, I, I believe God told me to handle my responsibilities. And for some reason in that, that moment, in that second, in that, that hospital bed, it, when that hit me, everything kind of changed. And I didn't know what was going to happen or where I was going to go. But from that second, I just, uh, I kind of, you know, I, I, I just said, I'm going to take full responsibility of what happened. And, and, I've never blamed anybody or, you know, tried to put the blame on anybody else for what happened that night. And, you know, I, I hold myself fully accountable and it, and it happened that moment. Um, and I haven't really, you know, um, been able to release all that. It's gotten easier. Um, you know, like I think we talked about it earlier yesterday was actually the 15th year anniversary of the accident. And so for 15 years, I've been feeling guilty and and struggling with what happened, you know, for 15 years now, um, ever since that moment in the hospital bed. In your heart of hearts, do you think you've put yourself in a life sentence where you'll feel that burden forever? Or do you think you'll ever see the light and be able to smile and laugh and have happy thoughts? Uh well, I, I have gotten a lot better the last couple of years with smiling and enjoying life. And, you know, yesterday was actually the first time that I didn't just sit in a hotel room or a, you know, bedroom and just cry for hours um, on that day. Um, I tried to stay busy and tried to, you know, focus on all these positive things that I've been doing and, try to use that as that motivating factor to know that what I did was really, really messed up and I can never make up for it. But I have and, to find my own personal way to live. Right. Absolutely. And when you finally did step up and say, you know, I'm responsible and, and I'm going to, you know, be sentenced, whatever you guys see as fit, what was the ultimate sentence that you got? How many years were you in prison and what was that follow through? So. Uh, when I was sentenced, I was I received a 10-year Department of Corrections sentence, so a prison sentence here in Colorado, and then I was also sentenced to five years of parole. Um, so those are two different sentences, um, even though they're within the same sentence, basically. And I ended up serving three years in prison, a year in the halfway house, about a year and a half on what they have, ankle monitor ISP, 
And then I did about two and a half years um, on parole. And then if you include, you know, after the accident, I was in the system from 2003 until um, April of 2014. That's a long time. And, That's a lot of time to think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, and I uh -huh. tell people this all the time that I still think I didn't do enough time, um, you know, mm -hmm. being in prison because you can't put a time on somebody's life. Well, and I know you think of Bill, the gentleman who, who, who you killed that day, that night, and you actually have a dedication to Bill on your body, a reminder every day. What is that? Yeah, I, I have an entire half sleeve with Bill's name and his gravestone um, on my right arm. And so I, I, I did that on purpose so that every time that I brush my teeth or any time that I have my, you know, my shirt off and I see in the mirror or I look down, um, it's a daily reminder of what pain I caused and who I hurt and not just Bill, but his family. And those are the things that I, I think about every single day since the accident. Um, and the, the tattoo is just my permanent a reminder on my body is just another one of those things that um, it, it keeps me grounded in knowing what, what I did um, so that there's never any, any chance of me ever, you know, letting it get away from my memory. Yeah. That's, Not and, that and that's could, really but... touching. I'm, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing that you did that. And it's a daily reminder that you see now, have you actually been in touch with Bill's family? Have you actually spoken to them or do they know where you're at right now in terms of trying to, you know, advocate for people not drinking the good work that you are doing? I don't think they know exactly um, how many things I've been doing the last couple of years. Um, a writer had to do an article on me a couple of years ago and he had to contact, um, you know, Bill's family and let them know that it was coming out. And so that's been kind of the last time that I've had any, you know, indirect contact with them. Um, and I hope one day I kind of do have contact with them because I, I, I just want to tell them, you know, face to face after all these things that I've been trying to do, you know, to prevent other families from going through what they're going, that they see that, you know, what happened to Bill, um, you know, made changes for a lot of people and saved a lot of people's lives. And, and, and I know that sounds kind of weird and I just want them to know that I'm, I'm working my tail off as hard as I can so that nobody else goes through what they're feeling. You know, Ethan, we never know what video, what radio show, what, you know, what um, article they're going to read that has you in it, but we're ending our interview now, but I, I want to give you a, a chance here. If you were, talking to them and they hear they happen to hear this show what would you want to tell them personally uh, I can't say sorry enough for what happened 15 years ago and that I work really hard every day so that Bill didn't die in vain and that I'm changing lives and that I'm sorry yeah. And they get that, Ethan. We all get that. We all feel that in this moment. And I want you to lift your head high today because those words, everybody hears it and it's coming right from your heart, right from your gut. And you're doing the best you can every day. And I hope in time you will let that guilt go little by little. And I hope Bill's family will hear that sadness in your voice 15 years later. I want to really thank you for sharing your story today. It's a tough one, but it takes one person like you to stand up and share that voice, share that story. And, you know, I hope Bill is looking down on all of us right now saying, yes, you know, get a designated driver, you know, keep going, keep sharing the word. Do you see that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ethan, for being on our show today. Um, you're amazing for what you're doing, and I do hope that Bill's family does hear this show and um, 
you know, at some point um, you guys can connect and have a heart to heart about that. But thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. And uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate you as well. And I want you to, I really want you to take this moment and smile because you're doing good work and it starts with all of us and you doing, you're doing your part. Okay. Thank you so much, Ethan, for, for sharing your story and for everybody listening today. We all felt the guilt that Ethan has for that night, but we've all had nights like that where we've broken someone's heart or we've hurt someone's feeling or we've made a wrong move, but it's never too late to turn a new page and be happy again. That's what it means to live full out. So we're going to be coming right back after this commercial break. So definitely stay with us. I am Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. We'll be back. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this company is looking for in an entry-level candidate. Great. Your resume isn't quite what we're used to, but you've got a fantastic work ethic. Thank you. And I'm impressed by how you carry yourself. So, should we talk about the job? Uh, what? The job? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I have no way of recruiting or even meeting you. This interview didn't happen. It may sound ridiculous, and that's because it kind of is. There's a huge pool of talent your company is missing out on. Meet the grads of life. Who are they? Talent worth knowing about. Young adults of unique determination and experience. An ideal fit for your company in an entry-level position, internship, or even mentorship. They might not have every qualification you typically look for, but they're exactly who your company needs. Man, we really could have used him. Don't miss out on a resource many innovative companies have already discovered. Go to gradsoflife.org to learn how to find, cultivate, and train this great pool of untapped talent. Brought to you by the Ad Council and gradsoflife.org. The following message is about Medicaid and CHIP, free or low-cost health coverage for kids and teens. Enrollment is open year-round. Hey, voice lady, give me the mic. Um, okay. Hey, DJ, let's switch up the music. That's better. So listen up, moms and dads out there. There are these programs called Medicaid and CHIP. They offer free or low-cost health coverage for kids. Things like doctor and dentist visits, prescriptions, and shots are covered. All the stuff that keeps kids like me healthy and in charge. So, as you can tell, a covered kid is a confident kid. And it means confident parents, too. To learn more about affordable health coverage for your family, visit healthcare.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. That's 1-877-543-7669. Yep, you could do something big for your family today because enrollment is open year-round. This has been a message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And Sophia. They're going to jump out of trees. You can't stop them. They'll go down the slide head first. They'll make parachutes out of sheets. They'll balance on things that are impossible to balance on, like the back of a couch or a windowsill or a scooter seat. They'll run with sharp objects. They'll run into walls. They'll climb things that won't hold their weight. They'll put their fingers in places where they could get smashed. They'll drive their tricycles down steep hills. They'll bounce balls off their faces. They'll step on each other. They'll jump on each other. They'll invent whole new ways to put themselves in jeopardy. But one of the most dangerous things kids will do happens while they're sitting perfectly still. Kids who ride in a car without a booster seat are much more likely to suffer serious or fatal injury during a crash than kids in boosters. But amazingly, 80% of all kids who need them aren't in them. After a toddler seat and until they're four foot nine, boost your kids and don't let them down. Go to BoosterSeat.gov to learn more about the importance of boosters. A message from the U.S. Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Have you ever lost a cat? And have you ever wanted to get your cat back after you lost it? I'm Andrew Hoffman. I invented the lost cat magnet. Just turn it on and lost cats stick to it. Just listen to one satisfied cat. That's proof. You should invent stuff too. But remember, don't do a lost cat magnet. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Ad Council. We are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. Enroll, we say, we want you to be okay. Enroll, we say, take care, people, for goodness sake. Health insurance is now affordable covers prescriptions, hospitalizations, and preventive care. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn more. 
and take care, people. Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. When we have moments of guilt, it's easy to feel hopeless, like there's no light in sight. But you want to remember that you can turn a page. You can choose to be positive. You can forgive. You can admit guilt. But most of all, you have to step forward, believe in yourself and your ability to thrive and live full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out show. And Today we've been talking about guilt, we've been talking about different emotions, feeling out of balance, just letting the burdens fall off of our shoulders so that we actually can thrive, so we can really put ourselves out there and and do and be our best. Now I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a caller on the line, we're going to go say hello to them. Hello, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi Nancy. Hi, thank you for calling Um, in, how can we help you? So I'm a college student and I'm in my second year. And mm-hmm. lately I find it um, hard to focus on my schoolwork because of like distractions, like hanging out with friends, um, just not working on my work when I'm supposed to. So what do you think are some ways that I can get some motivation to do my work? You know what? Again, so many times we've been there, right? It's hard to say no to things. We don't want to miss out on events. Um, But at the same time, I really believe that it's important to visualize. You know, when you go to sleep at night, take a few extra minutes before you turn on that TV to have a vision of who you want to be. Watch yourself working in the environment you want to be in. See yourself with the friends that you want to be with. Even envision the relationship that you one day want to have if you don't have it already. And having that vision near and dear to our heart, because we have to think about in life, when we say yes to to countless things and it distracts us and takes us away from that vision, that vision will get further and further away. And it may not seem like a big deal when you have something you really want to do and it gets deferred a week, two weeks. But I'm telling you, there are people that have dreams and goals in their lives and they turn around and a year's gone by. Five years have gone by. And it's just because things got in the way. So I'm so glad that you're actually calling about this now because you know, you don't want to miss out on the big things. So what do you, would you say is your biggest distraction? Number one. Mm, just going over to like friend's house or just sleeping in when I should be like up and more being more productive. <laughs> so have you ever slept in and you've missed something and you've gone, Oh, why did I do that? Yes. <laughs> right. Actually this week I, I missed one of my classes. Yeah. See, and, and, and that, that feeling of disappointment, knowing that you missed out on class, knowing that other people were informed and you weren't, wondering, gosh, is what I missed going to be on a test and now will I get a worse grade? You see how it festers just because you slept in. So in life, you want to show up. You want to be on time. You want to be early. Early bird gets the worm, they say, right? So you want to make sure that you're you're on time. And this distraction of going to your friend's house, I believe friendships are great. I mean, have as many friends as you possibly can. But you also have to be able to schedule your friendships because have you ever gone somewhere to take somebody something or just just a quick stop by and then all of a sudden you're there for hours? <clears throat> yeah. Right? Maybe even this just happened yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then when you turn around and you see that you've lost all that time, you had a good time, but you were there way longer than you had budgeted. I bet you found yourself having to stay up later to study. Maybe you even forego studying for something because you were too tired. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm getting at is it's this domino effect. And you have to say to yourself, I am better than that. 
my vision, my dreams, my goals for I have for myself, I'm not going to let sleeping in hold me back from my dream job. I'm not going to stay over at my friend's house any longer than I intended because I don't want to get behind. You have to kind of take charge. You have to have boundaries. You see that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Is that something you can do? I think so, yeah. I'll try to do that. All right. I want you to take out the word think and take out the word try because those are kind of words that are kind of iffy. Let me ask you again. Okay. <laughs> do you think you can do that? I will. I will. Right. Do you see that? That's more intentional. I will. I can. So just watch the way that you talk. Words like I think and I will try, it means that you're not committed. You're not intentional. But I will. I can. That That's a doer. Okay, so hang in there. You'll get through it. But thank you so much for calling in. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great day. You. And for everybody listening, I'm so glad that he brought up that last statement because it is the words that we say to ourselves. If you're feeling guilty, if, if you're feeling behind the eight ball, like you just can't get ahead, maybe you haven't treated people in the right way, maybe you've let people down, let to be... That today be the day that you turn that page. Call somebody today and say something positive. Cheer them on. Tell somebody today that you forgive them or that you please forgive me. Turn it around. Today is the day that you can choose words that support that vision that you have for your life. So I really thank everybody who listened today. It's all about living our life full out. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next show. Check us out at livingfullout.com. See you soon. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Soleri. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.